Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartuk-58. On the previous podcast, we followed along as Bolger opted to skip returning to Phoenix and instead join his new friends on the trail. The party has opted to leave the relative safety of Colby and head out to the frontier to do some exploration. We rejoin them now two hours later where they had previously spotted an owlbear after defeating the bandit leader Cornwall. Well, said Fargus Stoutheart, this is the farthest point we've gone east. What direction would we like to try? The group discussed their options and quickly determined that it didn't matter where they went, it would be new to them. Karina and Bolger expressed interest in seeing the owlbear up close. Despite a few misgivings for the others, the party decided that they would move down the ridge and head towards the creek area. From their vantage point, they could see a small herd of bison had moved into the far side of the water and an approach should be safe. The group guided their new mounts to the water so that the animals could drink, but skittered off as Peepers the axe beak rushed forward to quench its thirst. The horses moved down several yards and then took their time to suck in water. Lady Arena looked at Karina, pointing out that it may take a while for the mounts to get used to her animal companion. She apologized, but the group waved it off and began to fill their water skins from the flowing creek. Bolger looked out onto the water and seemed to be lost in thought. As Cabe Silvertongue approached him, he muttered, Missed it? But the squat gnome looked at him quizzically. The bard repeated himself, stating, The water, do you miss it? The former sailor smiled and nodded, but added that he wasn't ready to trade his newfound friends in for the sea just yet. Cabe laughed deeply at the response and clapped the short fellow heartily on the back. Sister Elaine noticed that Fargus was slowly walking along the edge of the creek and seemed quite intent on something. Giving the reins of her horse to Karina, the cleric walked over to the ranger and asked if there was a problem. The large human stood back and wiped the dirt off his hands. I think I found some owlbear tracks, but there's something wrong with them. The group gathered around and asked the ranger to explain, which he did. Fargus pointed out that most owlbears he knew of stood nearly eight feet tall and weighed a great deal. Both Qua Cabe and Lady Arena confirmed that that was their belief as well, but the human was still puzzled. After a few minutes of thinking, he continued, explaining that the tracks he had located certainly appeared to be from an owlbear, but they were much too small. He pointed out that the tracks and explained how he was measuring height and weight as the rest of the group noticed the tracks continued to down the creek towards a copse of trees near the water's edge. Without warning, the horses became jittery and peepers began to squawk loudly, sounding the alarm. The group looked to the axe beak as Karina attempted to quiet the creature. Returning their gaze to the trees, the group was caught off guard as a strange-looking creature emerged. Vargas and Cape's hands quickly went to their weapons as Lady Arena hastily began muttered a magical incantation. Bolger and Sister Elaine looked at the creature, dumbfounded by its appearance. The creature resembled a large owl with an angry look, but was only about four feet tall. Is that an owlbear? scoffed the former sailor as he began to approach the creature that was barely taller than he was. Bolger, be careful, warned Lady Irena, but the gnome brushed off the warning and walked right up to the creature. Cocking its head, the young owlbear looked at the gnome, pondering what it was as well. A high-pitched chirp escaped its sharp beak, followed by multiple louder chirps. The gnome stood face to face with the creature and began to mimic the chirping while laughing. Cabe, Fargus, and the elven mage all eased a bit as the creature certainly didn't seem to be dangerous with Bolger. The short owlbear began to flap its wings in an animated fashion, followed by the sailor duplicating its movements. While the sight was rather amusing, 
Karina pointed out that the creature could be a juvenile owlbear. This opinion was quickly dismissed by Cabe. Waif, you might not understand this, with you growing up in the city and all, but an owlbear is a creature caused by misplaced magic. Winking at Lady Irena, he continued to drone on about how they were not able to replicate themselves. Because of this, he mused that the owlbear must have been created by a short wizard which garnered a loud snort from Lady Irena and head shaking from both Fargus and Sister Elaine. Karina did not look convinced and spoke. Dingus Overmeyer used to tell me that we work together with nature to survive, but pointed out that nature would always beat us in the end. Nature, he finds a way. He used to... But her voice trailed off. A loud shrieking broke up the conversation and the waif pointed behind the party. Spinning around quickly, the group spotted a very large creature emerging from the copse of trees. Similar in appearance to the four-foot creature, the eight-foot owlbear broke limbs as it exited the grove and ran headlong towards the party. Mount up! Mount up! yelled Fargus Stoutheart as he rushed towards Karina and the horses. Frightened by the voluminous appearance of the mature owlbear, the horses attempted to escape and knocked the waif to the ground, but she held on for dear life. One by one, the rest of the party reached the frightened horses and desperately attempted to mount them as the owlbear charged. As the group got to their mounts, they turned back to see Bolger, frozen in place as he stood next to the juvenile beast. Fargus and the cleric spurred their horses towards the adult owlbear and stoic gnome, but they were surprised as peepers sped past the frightened mounts. Moving by Bolger's left shoulder, the axe beak lowered its head and smacked the four-foot owlbear backwards into its, the parental feet. Sister Elaine and the ranger each grabbed the sailor's arms and whisked him away headed towards the incline. The rest of the party followed with Lady Irena grabbing the reins of the sailor's mount. As they crested their eyes, Karina turned and gave a shrill whistle as Peeper and the adult owlbear circled each other. Upon hearing the mistress whistle, the axe beak sprinted past the angry owlbear as it hovered over its offspring. Reaching the top of their eyes again, both Fargus and Sister Elaine let go of the sore bulger who rubbed his shoulders. Lady Irena moved forward with the mount, and the rest kept an eye out for pursuit that did not come. The adult owlbear waddled back into the trees with a four-foot juvenile and disappeared from sight. It took a few minutes for the group to catch their breath from the harrowing experience, and Fargus looked at a smiling Karina. What? he inquired to the smiling young woman, who grinned and stated, Nature finds a way around any problem. Shaking his head as the others laughed, he raised his hands in surrender and began to move his horse east. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening. <laughs>